So, of course, like any new chapter that we add to Dead by Daylight, we want to add new gameplay opportunities. And in this chapter, we decided to look at technology. It was important for us, for the survivors, to feel like they were constantly being hunted by an apex predator. She is everywhere, she probably knows where you are, and she will kill you. So one of the things that we're always looking for on Dead by Daylight is different ways to interpret and interact with horror. We started to take a look at how the fast pace of modern technology can generate a sense of unease and fear unto itself. What can that technology do in the hands of people who are more aggressive, more predatory? And in turn, how can that technology end up corrupting people even further? So for this killer power, we had uh, this idea for a long time to use surveillance around the map uh, so that we really change the perception and how we play as a survivor. When you're far from the killer, you need to be careful as well. She can spot you from any place on the map. So the Skull Merchant is this interesting parallel between absolute predatory ruthlessness. We're portraying this in the way she moves, in the way she approaches actions. Even her technology itself has a brutality to it. But she also has an elegance to her. She comes from a fairly wealthy background and isn't afraid to indulge in the finer things in life. We get to play with this interesting idea of her being someone who, in a corporate context, could cut up a rival company for parts or cut up people for parts. I think what makes her unique is there's this constant feeling of observation. She always has eyes all over the map. So we came with this very interesting character, a slasher that not only used a knife, but pieces of technology to be able to use that surveillance mechanic. The drones are great tools for the killer to locate and force the survivors to navigate the map in a different way. The survivor's goal is to get close to the drones in order to perform the hacking drone interaction. And when they do that, they'll be presented with directional inputs. If they enter the sequence correctly, the drone will be returned to the killer's inventory and they'll get a claw trap. If they fail, the drone will enter the active state. So the Skull Merchant, before her days in the fog, she used to hunt only the best of the best. She wants the best trophies. And so because she has resources herself, she secretly have like a little home base that she travels with. You can see that as some sort of a hunting camp, but more high tech. And this thing is dropped into a zone where she's going to do her kill. So that's exactly what the map is. It's this little camp that's been dropped into a map that already exists. So she's adding to Shelter Woods. We wanted to find a way to represent the duality of her character in the environment itself. We get to show the fashionable and wealthy side of her, but we also get to show the bloody, dark, gritty, and brutal side of her as well. We love when our community creates stories around our different survivors and killers. And that's something that we've seen through the years, our stories on how survivors could have been friends or how are they linked together. So for this chapter, we wanted to introduce our first survivors that are linked for real. They are family. I love the parallels we're playing with here. We have a cold, calculating, apex predator. And we're contrasting that with the community-driven connection of our two survivors, who are siblings. So we get to play with the idea of unity and community-focused versus something cold and unrelenting and destructive. And that was very interesting narrative-wise and lore-wise. It was also something quite interesting for gameplay. We're introducing a new type of perk, two perks actually, one for Renato, one for Talita. And when both of these perks are used by different players in the same match, at the same time, they unlock something more powerful. So this is a very new and interesting take on perks, and we can't wait to see how players are going to react and use them. What I'm really looking forward to is for killer players to feel like that apex predator that the character is meant to be. Looking for her next challenge, looking for her next kill. Being on the hunt and going in close for the kill. And as for the survivors, I'm really looking forward to the dodging of the scan lines and getting close to the drone to disable it, and also the hacking interaction for the drones. We're super proud of the content of Tools of Torment, and we can't wait for you to experience it in Dead by Daylight. <laughs>